welcome to another episode of Raul's World of Sense. I am Raul. Today we are starting a new series on the Dofer A105 SSM low-pass filter. This video will be an overview of the layout on this specific module and will kind of serve as a foundation for some of the upcoming audio demonstrations that we'll be doing with the Dofer A105. The filter uses an SSM filter chip, the SSM2044. Some of the synthesizer legends that you may have heard that have this particular chipset in it are things like the Korg Poly 6, the Korg Monopoly, Fairlight 2, the PPG Wave 2.2 and 2.3, the EMU SP1200, and a couple of more obscure selections such as the CL DK600 and the Opera 6. Now that information is readily available on the website, but I thought it would be kind of nice to have it in the video format. That way you can kind of hear it as well. There's also a note on the website regarding the availability of this module, which has been discontinued, uh, at least posted on the website it is, uh, and that's due to some of the components within it not being readily available. So find it while you can, uh, you know, track it down at some of the different Eurorack vendors or find yourself a used one. Uh, somewhere on the web. Now let's talk about the front panel here and just kind of go through what all the controls do so that we're as we're going forward in the demonstrations we kind of know what the layout is in case this is the first video in Raul's World of Sense that you've ever watched. Uh, there's a standard audio input at the top right there. The attenuator over to the right that's going to allow you to control audio input. Uh, below that we have our frequency cutoff over here, it's all the way closed, and all the way over here, filters all the way open. And then, of course, you have your controls all in between right there. Pretty standard. Uh, there are two CV inputs here. So there's input number one, which goes right to the filter, and then input number two, which has an attenuator attached to it that will allow you to control the incoming modulation signal going there. Now, this first input does track one volt per octave. Uh, so in case you want to do you know, some standard filter tracking, you can. Um, you can also use it uh, with the self-oscillation that's built in at the very bottom. Uh, the resonance goes all the way up to self-oscillation. So you can actually use this filter as a sine wave oscillator if you want to. But we'll talk about that a little bit more here in a bit. Um, as I was saying before, you can kind of use the second input with this attenuator to kind of control your incoming modulation. So if you're feeding like an LFO or an envelope or maybe some other kind of modulation signal, uh, you can kind of control how much of that signal is going to affect the filter cutoff. So pretty standard stuff. And then, of course, if you have both of these occupied with modulation signals, you know, number one and number two, then the sum of that is going to be what's sent to the cutoff. So hopefully that made sense. And that's a standard uh, Dofer convention on the filters as well as a bunch of the other Eurorack modules. Now let's talk about the bottom section. It's kind of interesting, the resonance section and output. Um, bottom left, pretty standard audio output. Got to be able to hear it, right? Um, over on the right-hand side is your manual resonance control right there. Um, as I was saying before, it will self-oscillate. So when you combine it with the, let's see, the one volt per octave tracking here, you can use this as a sine wave oscillator in case you don't have too many uh, VCOs in your setup. You can have a second VCO sort of. Um, there's also a CV input to control the resonance parameter right here. And then immediately to the right of that, you have a attenuator that will allow you to control the incoming modulation that is being fed to the resonance parameter. So right there, in a nutshell, are the basics. So I'm gonna break from form a little bit and actually let you hear a few sounds, uh, although I will do kind of a fully featured uh, audio demonstration coming up soon. Um, if you look over on the left, I have sort of a sequencer set up over here, and I may go into more detail in the next video as to what all is going on over here, but suffice it to say, this guy over here is creating some notes, and back at our middle section, uh, those notes are going in via this cable right there, and we're going to hear sound coming out from our VCO. 
I'm just going to take a saw wave because that's a pretty harmonic rich waveform. And I'm going to patch it over into our filter right here. There we go. And then I'm going to take that output and go out to my mixer and you should hear it right away. <laughs> So that's just kind of a basic sound of the filter. And then let me just uh, adjust a few things here. Go through the cutoff there a couple times for you. I have kind of a medium resonance setting right now, but I could bring it all the way up into self-oscillation. And you can hear kind of some of the nice distorting sounds that are happening. And I kind of like this range right here. That's what I was kind of playing around with before. And I'm not sure how much of that you'll actually hear, uh, you know, via the YouTube channel and all that stuff and the compression, but... Let me unpatch that. Uh, so we will be doing a little bit more of that. Uh, we're going to be going into a little bit more detail, uh, maybe even get a VCA involved there so it's a little more interesting. Um, also, maybe get some modulation signals going uh, so we can get the resonance sort of modulated as well as the frequency cutoff, which is something that we normally just do in uh, the Riles World of Sense videos anyway. We kind of go through all the different sort of things that you could possibly do with it. Uh, not every scenario, of course, but some of them that I come up with. Um, at any rate, thank you very much for watching. I hope you found this useful. Um, stay tuned, as I was saying. Uh, in about a week, we should see the next one in the series, the audio demonstration. Um, and keep on patching out there. If you have any input, comments, anything like that, post them to this uh, page where the video is. Uh, I'm also going to try to make an effort to go back in some of the previous uh, Riles World of Sense videos and uh, get some playlists going for some of those that I haven't done already. I have quite a bit on playlists already, but I heard some of your feedback, so I did want to thank you guys for reminding me about that because sometimes I'm doing a lot of things and I don't always get around to putting all of the videos that I do uh, in one series into one playlist so that way you can easily find them because I know that my little pool of videos is starting to get kind of rather large and if you're looking for, you know, part four of the Dofer A106 filter series, and it's not in the playlist, then you have to go back and do a big search. And I know it's a lot of work, so I'll try and save you a little bit of work by trying to put those in the playlist going forward. Um, so again, thanks for watching, and we'll see you next time.